Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, the number one place for you to learn about the art and beauty of dividend investing. So today we are at week 41 of the dividend challenge in which I deposit at least $200 into my dividend investing portfolio every single Monday and by the end of this video you'll learn 5 things that have changed about my investment strategy. I will share it with you by the end of this video so please stay till the end. Without further ado, let's get started. So as always, let's start with the smallest portfolio first, which is my Weeble portfolio. When you click onto this middle button, you can see I'm actually down today. I'm at $1,054.05, I'm down by 9.5%, and I have the cash balance of $240.37. I'm debating if I should withdraw this out of my account. And when we scroll to the bottom, you can see that I have one share of TVIX, which is actually up by $14.24, one share of McDonald's, one share of Ultrix, three shares of Nokia, one share of Bank of America, two shares of AT&T, and 15 shares of Tapestry. So that is what's up with my Weeble portfolio, and full disclosure, I am planning to get rid of my Weeble portfolio just because I already have Fidelity, and to me, Fidelity is just like a more like all-in-one portfolio because I also have my retirement accounts within that like platform. It's just like a all-in-one app, whereas for Weeble, I just have my taxable account here, and it's also relatively small. But there there are a couple good things about Weeble, one of which is that it does have paper trading. So with paper trading, you can see my performance. Whew. I am actually up by 1.47%, up by $14,000 in my paper trading value. And my biggest gains are definitely at Tesla. Tesla's up by 40, 54,000, and then Alteryx up by almost 10,000. And Work, which is Slack, is also up by 3,000 almost 4,000, this is crazy. And McDonald's is the only thing that's down. And I also believe McDonald's is actually the oldest holding within this paper trading portfolio. Another good thing about Weeble is that you do get two free stock. And so when you look at here, here are my free stocks. Most of them are at least $25, which is like a lot better than Robinhood, which gives you like five bucks, five bucks stocks as a free stock. Whereas this is much more generous, Weeble is much more generous and it gives you like $30 free stocks. Now that we've taken a look at my Weeble portfolio, Let's take a look at my second largest portfolio, which is my M1 finance portfolio. So this is my M1 finance portfolio. Today, I'm up by 2.7%, up by $589.92. This is the portfolio that is mainly dividend investing, and I do deposit my $200 into this portfolio every single Monday. And in my transfer, you can see my $200 into this every single Monday. And then when you click into it, you can see all my different holdings, all my different pies. And so the good thing about M1 Finance is that it's mostly very, very automatic. You don't necessarily have to manually adjust anything. Once you set the allocation, your money just gets allocated automatically into the different sectors. And so right here, I have tech, 20%, real estate, 20%, bonds, 15%, and then there's finance, healthcare, consumer, telecom, and utilities. And you can see by far, the one that got hit the most is consumer. When we click into it, you can see Disney is down by a lot, Coca-Cola is also down by a lot, Tapestry is also down by a lot, because it's like a semi-luxury brand, so it's like definitely got hit by a lot. And then there's Costco and Target. And when we look at the biggest holdings, we can see over here tech, Tesla is up by 61%, almost 62%, up by 2,000, well, no, not 2,000, that's my holding. The green one is I'm up by $942.63. And I do have Tesla in my other portfolio too. So Tesla has just been going crazy. I did not expect this at all. This is actually like really, really unexpected. It's not like I planned this all out. I did expect Tesla to like go up, but I did not expect it to go up by this much. There's also Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Alphabet, Visa, and Ultrix. So I got one comment from my last video asking me why I'm holding Ultrix, mainly because it's, well, it's not a dividend paying stock, first of all, but I put it here mainly because I was like testing the waters. I only have like 2% here because I was testing the waters, but I have used Ultrix's software and I really like it from like a user standpoint. I also see that Ultrix has a lot of you know, corporation with big name companies out there. I think these are all public information, so I'm not really revealing anything. But um, I, I just see a lot of potential in Alteryx, and as a user, I really like using Alteryx. It is basically an automation tool for all the mainstream like database that you can find in all the different formats. For example, if you have an Excel or multiple Excel that has database in it, 
Ultrix can help you automate the process of just combing through the data and finding a solution or finding a conclusion with your data. You can also import data from Workday. You can import data from a lot of mainstream platforms, which is why I really see like a bright future for Ultrix. And um, this proved me right. They are up by 36%. And now that we've taken a look at the M1 Finance portfolio, I also want to invite you to my tutorial. So over here, it talks about everything that you need to know about using M1 Finance, the tutorial on how to use M1 Finance with just your phone. And as I've mentioned, M1 Finance is by far my favorite platform to do dividend investing. You are able to do many things automatically, automatic allocation, automatic deposits, transfers. You can also do automatic dividend reinvesting, which is what I'm doing. So all the dividend payout that I get, it gets reinvested back into my portfolio. And if you want to know how how much dividend do I get from this 20,000 portfolio or $20,000 portfolio? Check out this video in which I tell you exactly how much I get paid with my $20,000 portfolio. But keep in mind, not every single stock in here are dividend paying. For example, for my Tesla, this is quite a big holding. The reason why it's here is because I do want to buy it in fraction initially. I started this portfolio in 2019. At that time, my financial situation is not the same as right now. So I did want to start with like a smaller fraction of Tesla because I did not want to dump that much money into Tesla but yeah now you know even fractional share is doing pretty great now that we've looked at my second biggest portfolio let's take a look at my biggest portfolio which is my fidelity portfolio so this is my fidelity portfolio currently I am actually down by 0.17 percent by the day down by 164 dollars and 36 cents and in my positions you can see here are my holdings I have CCL, Boeing, and Prospect Capital, 3M, MasterCard, Visa, Disney, Alibaba, Intel, Starbucks, Uber, Facebook, Tapestry, Revolve, Elf, Tesla, this is just my cash, and then I have, this is my free stock that I just got. And this I got from Robinhood. Robinhood free stock is not even $3. Like, seriously? Seriously, Robinhood? And then when you do it by, let's say, total gain and loss. So you can see by far the biggest loser is CCL. It's down by four digits, $1,580.36. I also have Boeing down by 21%, down by $475.57. Prospect Capital is down by $35.54. My biggest winners are over here. My three biggest winners are in terms of percentage, Tesla's up by 119%. This is crazy. Elf is up by 56%. Revolve is up by 39%. And when we do it by dollar amount, you can see the biggest winner is actually Facebook, which is up by $9,534.43. Tesla is up by $3,238.32. Alibaba is up by $2,485.05. So these three are my biggest winners. Disney is also up by $1,000. $113.97, which means my total gain and loss is $17,820.51. And one thing that I really, really like about Fidelity is just that I can have all my different portfolios in one place. For example, my like retirement accounts, my rollover IRA for my previous company, and my current 401k, they're all within this platform, and which means I only need to know one login to access all my information. And you can also see like the 52 week range. So for example, you can see Tesla is pretty high up there. Facebook is also pretty high up there. Revolve, not so much. And Tapestry is pretty low. So you can get to see like how does this current price compare to the 52 week range? And now that we've taken a look at all three of my portfolios, let's talk about the key lessons that I learned my investment strategy, how it has changed throughout time. And so the number one strategy change is that I want to check the market less. And so one common tendency that a lot of new investors make is that they tend to check the market every single day. And in my last video, I did say, you know, as a personal finance YouTuber, especially because I'm focusing on investing, it's kind of my job to look at the stock market, but at the same time, this is kind of a bad habit because I do get triggered, I do get emotional by looking at all these news, by looking at all this volatility. And I also mentioned in my FOMO video, which is over here, I did mention how I do have FOMO because I focus on the little bumps along the way and I sold too early. And so number one, check the market less. And number two is I want to stop watching similar 
investing videos, which is kind of counterintuitive because in the past I did use this as like a learning tool for me to really freshen up my knowledge. But lately I got a lot of comments saying that, oh, your content is like similar to so-and-so. Even though like in my opinion and my defense, I don't really think so because we have different portfolios. So just because the format is similar doesn't mean the content is similar because we intrinsically have different stocks to talk about. But then I do see that like, even subconsciously, maybe when you watch other similar channels, you might adopt a certain style or a certain format. And I feel like it kind of kills my creativity and I don't want to be like everyone else. I do think I have a unique angle and I do think my channel is different than most other personal finance and investing channels. But then, yeah, to prevent myself from you know killing my creativity and getting too inspired by others, I decided to really stop watching other or avoid watching other really similar channels. And in addition to that, I also want to stop watching the top five must buys or top 10 must buys because I feel like it's just not a good way to train my brain into thinking individually. I don't want to be too easily influenced by other content creators, not saying that they're wrong or it's bad, but I just want to have my own individual thinking and be able to make decisions on my own. Number three is I want to have a deeper analysis on my current holdings. And so I plan to do this every quarter, every single quarter, I'm going to do like an information refresh and use my automatic stock analysis template to help me just do a one-click analysis for me to quickly understand this company. And if you're interested, you can join my membership in which you can get your own copy of this auto spreadsheet. But yeah, this is one of my ways to really quickly freshen up my knowledge of all my company holdings. And it also helps me ensure that I have the newest information and I'm not relied upon like last year's like 2019's annual report. In addition to that, number four is that I plan to Marie Kondo my portfolio. And so right now you can probably see from my M1 Finance and Fidelity portfolio, I have have a lot of portfolios. Like I have three portfolios that I talk about in all of my videos and you can see it's kind of like cluttered, it's kind of all over the place. So I am planning to Marie Kondo my number of portfolios from three to two and I'm also planning to Marie Kondo what is in each of my portfolio to make sure that I can really keep track of every single company that I hold. If you have too many companies, it's really hard for you to keep track of like which companies are doing what, um, which company you should hold, which company you should sell, which company you should buy. And uh, number five, along with Marie condoing my stocks, my different companies, I also plan to finally get rid of my Weibo portfolio. And so right here, I want to explain a little bit about why I got the Weibo portfolio. So first of all, I was really into the two free stocks by depositing $100 into the portfolio. You get two free stocks and I was really, really into that. So I decided to do that to get the two free stocks. And in addition, to that there's also the paper trading and also I want to test it out. I want to be the lab rat to you know recommend anything to you guys. And after I've been using it for, I want to say at least six months already, I do really like using Weeble. I don't see anything like really bad with it. And even when there's like a circuit breaker, nothing happened to Weeble, which is like a lot better than Robinhood. So I definitely recommend Weeble, especially if you are new to investing. And with $100 of deposit, you can get the two free stocks, the second stock valued up to $1,400, which is just pretty insane if you ask me much, much more compared to Robinhood. And you also saw the Robinhood stock that is sad, a sad little three buck stock. So um, definitely I would recommend Weeble over Robinhood. And I also said goodbye to Robinhood. You can see the reason why in this video and you can see how I transferred out of Robinhood too. So that is it with my dividend strategy, my five new strategy that I am adopting and also my dividend investing challenge. Thanks for being here with me for 41 weeks and I look forward to seeing you in my other wealth building and dividend investing videos.